The formula to overcome objections using stories is, number one, validate your prospect's feelings or concerns. Number two, use a similar situation story to add color and credibility to your words. And number three, close with a what I'd like to do statement. In addition to this extremely useful strategy, you can also get into the habit of asking three follow-up questions to any objection they might throw at you. It works something like this. If the question is, well, I think your membership fee is too high. The answer to that, oh really? Well, how high is it? Have you found another business exchange? Is the investment for the lifetime membership the only consideration? Ask three questions for every objection and draw the prospect to their own conclusion. If they really feel the investment is too high, perhaps because they had a bad experience with a similar organization in the past, this obviously is what you need to go back to in the discussion and it's what they're going to go back to in the discussion as well. In that case, go right to the three-step process. It would sound something like this. Well, I can certainly understand how you feel. I can't speak to what you experienced in the past, but interestingly enough, I had a similar situation with another member who felt that the investment for a Poyu Lifetime membership was too high because of a negative experience they had in the past. When I was able to do a cost analysis for them to find out how much cash they could save in their expenses, they realized that membership in the Poyu marketplace is an amazing value. They ended up joining the network and are happy they did. So what I'd like to do is quickly spend a couple minutes with you talking about your cash expenses. Now this leads right into the discussion of their hard cash expenses. So how much do you pay for building maintenance a year? What about carpet cleaning? How about advertising? Simply remember these three important things when dealing with objections. Use a preemptive sales strike on the prospect's objections meaning that you bring up a perceived objection before the prospective member can. You answer the objection and then move on. And that's why it's important to study the common objections included in this section. Help the prospect discover their own answer for the question. And finally, be a facilitator of the sales process instead of a dictator. Use Socratic questioning by asking why questions a lot. This will help you move the prospect towards answering their own questions. This is much more powerful than telling. Remember that hesitation is a natural part of the process that all human beings go through when they buy. It means that your prospect is interested. It does not mean they are running away. Here are some common objections and responses. What about taxes? Well, when it comes to taxes, there are no advantages or disadvantages to using our electronic currency called the I.O. The I.O.s you receive are a taxable income, and when used for business purposes, they can be written off as an expense. Whatever is left in your account at the end of the year needs to be claimed on your income tax. Now, sales tax and tips are collected by the seller at the time of sale and are paid by conventional currency like cash, check, debit card, etc. Another objection might be, what if I decide I don't want to be a member in the future? Or what if in the future I just sell my business? Well, very simply, we shut off your active status, remove you from the directory, and cease promoting your business. If you have an I.O. balance, you can continue being an individual member of the POYU platform, transfer the money to your personal accounts, and you can still enjoy spending your I.O. balance. Another common objection is, what if I take in too many IOs? Now make no mistake about it. Many businesses will think that everyone is going to want their business. Here's how to answer that objection. Did you ever take in too much cash? The Poyu platform provides a number of opportunities to spend and as a business there are always new opportunities to explore. Secondly, you always have control of your own account. You can simply say no. We can't make you accept IOs at any given time. That's why we will always have more than one of every type of business.
Another objection is, what if I can't spend my IOs? Well, really and truly, this is pretty much the same answer as the last objection. We teach them to take in some new business, spend the IOs down, and repeat as they continue to become more comfortable. Remember, we don't charge interest, nor do we pay interest. There is no incentive whatsoever to save the IOs. But instead, members keep the value circulating, and that's to their benefit. Another objection is, what if I can't service or, or get to them? Okay, so let me give you an example of this. An example would be a house painter or perhaps a carpet cleaner or a heating and air conditioning person, maybe an electrician in a busy time or a busy season. We know we don't tell business owners how to run their company. Our job is to make their phone ring. Here's a question you can ask them if a prospective member asks you about being able to service the Poyu clients. Well, how would you be able to handle it if they were a cash paying customer? Wait to allow them to think about it and respond and then reiterate with them. When you're dealing with IO clients, just handle our members the exact same way. As a sales professional, you should always welcome objections. They simply mean that you are moving through the process of bringing in a new member.